Good morning, everyone. Welcome back. Today is test review day two. We're going to be talking a lot about uh, the graphing form for several different types of functions. So the other two standards on the test are really going to uh, test your knowledge of how to uh, go from different forms of a function, uh, either using a graph, a verbal description, uh, or or any any uh, algebraic technique as well. So uh, I might give you a graph and ask you to write the graphing form of an absolute value function or I might give you a parabola and say, hey, write the factored form of the parabola. Uh, so I'm going to go through a few of those with you today and show you again how that's done to hopefully refresh your memories and get you ready for the test. Uh, this first problem I would especially pay attention to because it's going gonna, it's gonna to link those algebraic techniques such as factoring and completing the square uh, to getting into different forms for our parabola. All right, so here we go. All right, so we are given a graph. They give us some information here. It says, uh, for the following graph, you may assume the stretch factor is one or negative one. So we have a graph of a parabola here, uh, which is nice. And they also give us the equation of the parabola, but it is in what we call standard form. Okay, so this is in standard form. All right, which is nice. We can use that. So like if I wanted to, I can go put that in a calculator or I can put that into Desmos and I can graph that pretty quickly. And uh, I, I would get the same graph that I see here in the picture. So that could be a handy piece of information to have. But let's see what they want us to find. All right, so like the first thing it says, find the vertex of the parabola shown. All right, that's pretty easy. I can find that on the graph. The vertex is always located here. It's either the minimum or the maximum of the parabola, uh, depending on which direction it's going. But it's always right here. It's either a valley bottom or a hilltop, right? And so this is our valley bottom, the bottom of the valley, okay? And that has a location. So when I enter this into my open math or I, I do this on my test, I'm going to make sure that I give it a location with a full coordinate. So it's got an x coordinate of 3 and a y coordinate of negative 1. Okay, and I make sure I put my parentheses around that with my x and y values separated by a comma. Now the next thing they want to know is where are the x-intercepts, so that's going to be the location where the parabola crosses over the x-axis. Okay, so I can find that here and here. It crosses over the x-axis in two different locations, and again, I'm going to make sure that I state those as points. So this is going to be 2 comma 0 for the first one. This one's going to be 4 comma 0 for the second one. So it actually has two x-intercepts, and in my open math, I would list those separated by a comma. Okay, let's see what else they want us to find. They want us to find the y-intercept, no problem. So that's another thing that I can use my graph for here. So the y-intercept is going to be where it crosses over the y-axis. That's this vertical line that splits the graph in half right here. And I see my parabola crosses right here at positive 8. All right, so I'm going to write the location for that. That's going to be at 0, 8. Okay, so again, full coordinate with parentheses. Don't forget those. All right, let's see what else. They want us to write the equation of the parabola in graphing form using any method of our choice. Okay, so we have an equation. So remember up here, they gave us an equation. It's in standard form, but now they want it to be in graphing form. And there's a couple of ways that you can go about this. Uh, you could complete the square, which I'm going to show you how to do here. Um, and so let's do that one first. So I'm gonna complete the square to get into graphing form. Oops. So this is where we uh, divide into uh, four compartments. We're going to put the x squared in the upper left-hand corner, and then we take the middle term right, of our standard form and we cut it in half. So that negative 6x gets split in half to become negative 3x and negative 3x. So I fill in that other diagonal like that. And then I I go ahead and I start working on my outside dimensions here. So for an x squared, I'm going to need x times x to get x squared. And then x times negative 3 will get me the negative 3x. And x times negative 3 will get me the negative 3x. And then when I multiply those negative 3s, I get a positive 9. And then I can start writing my equation. So I can say y equals, um, and then in parentheses, I'm going to have x minus 3 squared, and that's because I have x minus 3 times x minus 3. It's the same on both sides. So I have x minus 3 multiplied by itself, which is the same thing as saying x minus 3 squared. Okay. Now, remember on the end of our equation over here, we had a plus 8 
Okay, so we needed a plus eight, but with our box here, we have a nine, so I have to go from nine back down to eight, so I would have to subtract one off the end. And this is our graphing form for the parabola. Okay, now you might notice that there is a link here, and I'll draw this in a different color, so you don't actually have to complete the square to get this. You could have just used the coordinates from your vertex because the vertex is also a locator point. Okay, so another way we could have done this, we could have done this like this, where we write out the blueprint from our graphing form. So we can say a parentheses x minus h squared plus k. And they told us in the instructions that we can assume the stretch factor is one or negative one. Since the parabola opens upward, it would be one. And then we use these as our locator point, right? The vertex is a locator point, so since that's a positive three, that means it moved to the right three, so we would have x minus three squared, and k would be minus one. So you could complete the square, or you could use that graphing form with the locator point to write your equation like we've done many times in the past. So the choice is really yours here, okay? All right, let's take a look at the last one here and let's talk about uh, this one. It says, write the equation of the parabola in factored form. Okay, so factored form using any method of your choice. So recall that factoring, factored form looks like this, right? Where we have x minus, let's call it a, and x minus b, right? So it's, it's where we have the two parentheses being multiplied by each other. We call these factors. And so obviously getting into factored form gives you a hint. You could use factoring method to get into factored form, okay? So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna use my box and diamond to get into factored form. And we start by putting the x squared term into the upper left hand corner. So there's my x squared. And then the constant on the end of the equation goes in the bottom right hand corner. So there's my eight. And then we set up our diamond. All right, so there's my diamond. So that middle term goes in the bottom. That's what we want to add to. And then we multiply that first diagonal to get the top of my diamond. So we want to multiply to eight, but add uh, to get negative six. Okay, so to do that, we need to figure out two numbers, right? And you, uh, like I said, you might have to trial and error a couple times before you find the right combo, uh, but make sure you pay attention to the negative here. So we need a negative four X and a negative two X. Negative four times negative two is a positive eight. Negative four plus negative two is a negative six. So this would work. So I'm gonna say negative four X, negative two X, okay? And then I start working on the outside numbers, right? So we need an x and an x to get an x squared. x times negative four gets us the negative four x, and x times negative two gets us the negative two x. And then we write our equation, right? So we could have x minus four and x minus two, and there's our factored form, all right? Notice the relationship here. Another way that you could have done this is you could have just used your x-intercepts. So notice the link here between the factors and the x-intercepts. You see the four and you see the two showing up there in the x-intercepts. So another way that we could have done this, we could have just started with the blueprint for the factored form, and then we would take that two, put it in, take the four, put it in. All right, just remember that the signs change, right? So if this was a negative two, you'd be putting in a plus two here, all right? So this is currently a positive two, so it goes in as x minus two. Same thing with this one, it was a positive four, so it would go in as x minus four. So the signs change when you go into those parentheses. Okay, so you have a couple of different options for answering those. All right, guys, so let's move on to another type here. Let's see, so we got describing transformations. All right, so they give us a function here and they want us to describe all the transformations that took place. And what I would recommend doing here is going back to pretty much any set of notes, but uh, I would go back to the set of notes where I gave you all six functions with their graphing forms on them at the same time, the one that I gave you before the quiz last week. Uh, that one has all the information in one place so that you could recognize what type of function this is and figure out where your A, H, and K values are. Okay, and that's where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start by identifying what type of function this is. And I, I can tell from the fraction part of it that this is a rational function. Okay, 
because this is a rational function. And then I can tell from the negative out front that it's been reflected over the x-axis, right? So remember that negative is what causes the reflection, right? And so if it were a parabola, it would cause it to go from opening upward to downward. Uh, for the rational function, it takes those curves and it, it, it uh, reflects them over the x-axis. So you would have those two separate curves. They would flip over the x. So if they were in the upper right, it would go down to the lower left, um, so forth and so on. Okay, so this is a reflection over the x axis. Okay, the three here, that's our a value, so that represents our stretch factor. Since it's a number bigger than one, it has been stretched by a factor of three. Okay, and then we go down here and talk about this plus two. This is where our horizontal shift comes from, so how it moves left or right. Uh, so if it's a plus two, that means it uh, was shifted left two units. And then the last thing I'm gonna talk about here is the plus eight on the end. That's our K value. That controls up and down movement. So this one has been shifted up eight units. Okay, so for the test, you should be prepared to identify the verbal description of any transformations that took place on any type of function, whether it's rational, square root, cubic, whatever. Make sure that you're ready for any type of function and make sure that you're ready to describe any type of transformation. Okay. So now let's go the other direction. So here I give you the verbal description. I want you to write the equation. Uh, so we'll start with our first clue here. It says it is a square root function. So I would go back to those notes and I would find the blueprint for a square root function, which should look like this, right? So you have a square root x minus h and then plus k on the outside of the square root. And then it's just a fill in the blank kind of game here. We've got to find these three things to complete our equation. All right, so it does say it opens downward. So that means I'm going to be throwing a negative in front of the a value. And it says that it has been vertically stretched by a factor of 6. So that stretch factor goes in for a. So we're going to have a negative 6 square root x. And then we need to figure out our h value. Now, instead of giving us the left and right movement and the up and down movement, it has simply told us what the locator point is. And if you recall, we talked about this on the front page. The locator point gives us the h and the k values. So if h is at positive 6, that means our square root function has moved to the right 6. And to move to the right, we have to subtract. So I'm going to say x minus 6. That would cause a shift to the right 6 units. The k value is a 3, which means that our square root function has been moved up 3 units. So to move up 3 units, I would need a plus 3 on the outside of the square root. And that completes our equation. Okay. And again, you should be prepared to do that for any type of function. So this was a square root function, but uh, you should be prepared for cubic, rational, square root, uh, absolute value, quadratic, linear, whatever it may be. Okay. All right, last problem I'm going to show you here is uh, going from the graph to an equation for any function. So we would look at the graph and look at that shape first. This is a, a V shape. It's got the pointy end, not the curved end. So don't get it confused with the parabola. This is an absolute value function. All right, you, you can go back to your notes again. Look at that. Look at those tables that I gave you where we summarized that. Look for this shape, right? And that's going to tell you what kind of a function you are writing. So we've got Y equals a absolute value x minus h plus k. All right, so there's our blueprint. And again, we just have to go through and find uh, these three pieces of information. Whenever I give you a graphing problem like this, I will include in the instructions that you can assume the stretch factor is either one or negative one. All right, and you we can tell that this has been reflected since the v is opening downwards. All right, and some of the other functions, you might want to look at that graph that I gave you that gives you the parent function, so that parent function before anything's been done to it. Uh, so that way you, you can use that to help identify whether or not uh, reflections have occurred. Okay, So I'm going to put a negative 1 in here for A since it has been reflected. And then the next thing I'm going to find is the locator point. 
So recall for any of these uh, functions, the locator point almost always starts at 0, 0. Okay, and for the absolute value function, the locator point is the vertex of the V. So right now it's located at this point. It started here at 0, 0. Okay, so it went from here to here. So we can track the movements from one point to the other. So I'm gonna get my, my left or right movement here first. So going from here to here, we had to go right one unit. All right, so to go right one, we would need x minus one inside of that absolute value. And then to get to my point, I would have to go down two units. Okay, so that means to go down two units, I would have to make k a minus two and that actually completes my equation. There's nothing left that I need to find. I found all three, the H and K value. I identified the reflections, so we're good there. Okay. All right, guys, that's it for test review day two. Uh, hopefully you found that helpful. If you have any questions, make sure you come on back to the Zoom chat and let me know. Have a great day.